So guys, before we get started, don't forget we do have that amazing discount code, thanks to Tier Zero Games, going on right now. And all you have to do is put in Z W Games five to get five percent discount on your total order at tierzerogames.com. The links will be in the description below. What's up, YouTube? This is Joe from Z4 Games. As requested by you guys, I am bringing to you guys an update to my Nordic God deck. Not only will this be a deck update, but there will also be at the end a what free? I want to say a one card and a free card combo. And I'll explain the difference between them. It literally the added two cards literally differs between you having one Nordic God and two Nordic Gods in one single combo. So you'll see that at the very end. But before I even get to all that, please, if you enjoy this video, please give us a like and a subscribe down below as well so that you guys don't miss out on any future content. It helps us out a lot to give you guys more and all the content that you guys request and that we just provide to you naturally. So we thank you guys for that a lot and we do greatly do appreciate it. So, with that said and done, let's get into the profile. Starting off with the tuners on the deck, I am playing three copies of the Vandis of the Nordic uh, Ascendant. This literally, I'm playing maximum on three of this just because it can go into any Nordic God, so you're not limited from your resources from that. That's the main one that you do. So, though I do play two Gulfax as well, um, just because Gulfax helps us go into R4 and the, with the fact that I can expect more synchros being played nowadays just because synchros don't have to go to the extra monsters anymore um, you could probably resolve Gorfax's effect of summoning itself and playing one tuner in the forms of well the Nordic Alpha this helps us synchro summon quite easily into our low key just because you can use this and two Nordics from your hand um, to synchro summon it's very very nice uh, that's it for the tuners. Moving into the non-tuners, we're playing two, uh, three copies of Tangus here, um, of the Nordic Beast, and three uh, Tangosnir of the Nordic Beast as well. We're playing maxing out three of these just because they help us go into our Nordic Gods easy, just because two level three, six plus a level four tuner, boom, you got your Nordic God there. And they are, are the most consistent engine in the deck in terms of Nordic God um, specific cards. Just because they help go into each other and the white goat helps us get tokens on the field as well. We are also playing two Devos and Nordic Alpha. This is important for our Isolde play. The Isolde play is probably still one of the best plays in the deck just because it is literally a one card Nordic God on its own and does set up for your second God as well, which we'll see in the combo. Uh, three copies of. Uh, Alivus of the Nordic Alpha. This is like your cheap way to get a Nordic God on the field. While it's in the graveyard, you can banish it. If Nordic God is destroyed, you can summon a new one from your extra deck. Um, though it's not treated as a synchro summon, so do bear that in mind. So that if Nord that Nordic God does get destroyed, it can't come back. So again, just do that, bear that in mind. But it's also, if you just you can just banish this off your link. So that way you can just get free Nordic God materials on the field very, very easily. So it is just helps quick um, speed up your deck as well. Being level 4 as well is also important for your combo as well, which is why we're also playing two copies of Lusaf. Uh, I'm mostly playing this just because it is a Nordic level 4 name, but it's also quite handy as well, just giving you those additional resources on the field if your board um, allows it. Uh, we're also playing the one tier and the one uh, Mirmir as well. Uh, just for Mimi for the level and the versatility and tier because it is a warrior searchable level for Nordic monster. All perfect for the deck. And for your one card uh, engine, I am playing three copies of Near Space Connector and the one Arcrid Dolphin. This could be any level four warrior engine that you want to. You can go with things like Armageddon Knight and Destiny Hero Malicious. Um, so it's completely up to you. I've just gone for this just because it's probably the one of the most consistent and the most versatile and the fact you can play three of this and one of this um, just makes it that um, more consistent. If you can't get the Aqua Dolphin, you can just play a copy of Elemental Hero Neos as well. So you've got the options there. And this next, to run out the monsters is this uh, little engine that I can't take credit for. 
um, I have to give credit to um, Lord Trent on YouTube. I found this on his deck profile of Nordics. Um, just while scrolling just to see if there are any um, other Nordic combos for you guys. I found this little engine and this little kind of like gimmick, but it actually has a lot of meaning to the deck. And uh, I say meaning, but a lot of um, understanding to the deck. And that is three copies of Goddess of Sweet Revenge and the one copy of Archlord Christia. This is crazy, like, but the the idea of this is is that if you want to go all out on your play while playing the deck, if you want to go all out with your Link Monster, you can literally banish everything in your hand and everything on your field, get the materials you needed, and you can make like one or two Nordic Gods. From there, if you're literally just left with the Sweet Revenge in your hand, if they out your board and go for an attack, you can literally summon the Sweet Revenge, wipe out the board, and then summon the Archlord Chris here as well after that. So they've got the whole board cleared, and they now have to deal with uh, an Archlord Chris here. Like, it's insane. Like, I just was like, what? No way. And then I had another little look at it, I had to think about it, I was like, actually, that's pretty good. Worst case scenario, just banish this of your Nordic Link for Nordic God material. So it still serves other uses in the deck naturally by just being a banishable card. It's really cool, it's a really cool gimmick, and it actually just gives me a deck to put this card in. And it kind of fits the thing, Gods and Goddess, like, come on. It's pretty cool. I thought I'd share it with you guys, I'm uh, probably just keep it in the deck. Whether I keep Oswald Christian or not, I'm not too sure. But I just think this is a really cool little engine, so thanks again to Lord Trent for sharing this um, little tech um, for everybody, so I really like it. Moving on to spells, we're playing the one copy of Reinforcements of the Army, one copy of 141 for your Diverg. Um, two copies of Nordic Relic Drapnir, this is important to the combo. Um, just because it is a Nordic Relic card that you can recover off your Diverg while also being an equipment card. And then we're playing the one copy of DDR. And we do banish a lot, so being able to just discard a card and get one of those cards back is pretty handy. And being an equipper as well helps with your result. I'm playing three one-off spells in the forms of Foolish Burial, Monster Reborn, and Scapegoat. The reason playing Scapegoat is not for Link Materials or anything like that. It's literally in the sense that it is a defensive card if you need to. But being able to generate four tokens that you can just banish all those tokens for your Link Monster and get four Nordic cards on the field is pretty handy. So we're playing the Scapegoat as a tech choice in that. So at the main deck, we are playing just three copies of Glyphnir, the Fetters of Fenrir. It is your rotor for all your Nordic cards, so having a rotor is pretty good. I just don't understand why it's a trap card. Like, I'll never understand why they made it a trap. It wouldn't have broken Nordics at all. And still won't if it was a spell. So, Konami, please give us a spell version of Glyphnir. Um, or just more Nordic God support. Uh, moving on to the extra. The extra is not exactly what I would say is the best extra. It's just it's the extra that I personally enjoy playing. There's a lot of cards that I'm going to advise to take out that you can put in for other stuff. Um, though, to be honest, I'll explain another thing that you can just do with the extra as well. We are playing two Odin, two four, and two Loki. I just like to go two, two, two. On all the Nordic gods. I love my ulti versions of um, Odin and Thor. They're really, really nice. But yeah, I just like to go 2 2 2. It just means I always have Nordic god for any scenario. Uh, I am playing one Lear Keeper Sacred Trees and Beals was the um, the Diabolic Dragons. Just more level 10s that you can go into with Mara. Mara doesn't lock you into what you're summoning, it just locks you into the materials that you're using. Um, I'm playing the free. Uh, unicorns in the forms of Lightning Tricorn, Baltic Bikehorn, and Thunder Unicorn. You can actually just make these in the deck naturally through your Nordic Beast engine. Uh, so I just enjoy playing these. I also have some very nice ulties as well of each of these just to play in the deck. And then for our Link Monsters, we're playing the one is old and the three good Vergs, your Nordic Link one. So the Gavurgus is like the Nordic you're always going to, the Link Monster you're always going to be summoning because it just helps you get your resources for the God. And the Azold is part of the play to help you get into your Nordic God with one card. Um, what I would advise taking out is just literally take out the Unicorns and take out these. 
and maybe a low key, and you can actually just put in super poly targets, which is actually really nice. Um, you can play super poly in your side deck and just literally max out super poly targets in your extra because literally your main goal is to just summon a Nordic God. Once you get the Nordic Gods in play and circulation, your deck's pretty good to go and just like literally flows on its own. So you can literally just max out on super poly targets in your extra which is really cool. So that's it for the deck. I'm going to quickly show you guys the one card combo as well as the extra cards in your head that you can get the second god on the field so i'm literally going to just use all of this so your one card combo resolves on just if you open up with any way to get into a zold you can get into your nordic god combo but if you have two additional level fours in your hand you can get a second god on the field as well so i'm going to show you the one card combo so literally you normal summon your warrior engine in forms of me, the near space connector. Near space connector summons your aqua dolphin. You link those two off into his old. His old's gonna grab your warrior on summon, so you add your tier to your hand. You're then going to use the Isol's effect to send your copy of Drapnir. This will let you summon a level one warrior from your deck, which is going to be your Deverg. You're then going to link your Deverg off into your copy of Gulverg. Now chain links now activate. Gulverg, your link one, is going to banish uh, cards in the field and the hand to summon Nordic cards from your deck. Chain link one, but the cool thing is that it doesn't target. So chain link two to Verg to add a Nordic relic from graveyard to hand. So you're going to add your copy of Drapnir to your hand, and then you're going to banish all of your monsters into summon your Vandus and your copy of Tengrisnir, Tengosnir. And then anything else. So I'm going to summon a copy of Mara. You can then just tune these off your Vandus and your two goats into your god. Simple as that. The god can now go in the main monster zone just because of Master Wolf. So that is the one card engine, one card combo to get one Nordic god in the field, and I guess something else. So if you didn't have the other two cards in your hand, you can turn this into a copy of Alvis, so that way if Alvis does go, you can, you know, get back your uh, different Nordic God. But, if we had these two cards in hand, you could now use the Mara's effect, uh, well, not really, it's not really an effect that you activate, but because of her effect, you can tune this with two Nordics in your hand. So you can actually just turn, uh, your bower and your two level fours in hand into a second Nordic card. So you see how the one card combo, which is adding two additional levels monsters in your hand, Nordics in your hand, can turn it into a two god combo. Really cool, really interesting, um, and it's just something really nice that Nordics can now actually do, uh, thanks to all the support that they've been given. So. I hope you enjoy this profile guys, I hope you enjoy this video and everything, um, leave your comments down below and thoughts down below what you think of it and um, what you playing with your Nordic deck, uh, Nordic deck. Um, I'd like to hear that as well. So, as always guys, like, comment and subscribe and until next time as always, happy dueling.